good to be here at Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church, and God has gave us another week. He's gave us another sunny day. It's supposed to rain, but we don't care anyway. There you go. <laughs> the title of the service today is going to be Your Faith on Trial. Your Faith on Trial. God's so good to us. He takes care of us. I want to welcome all the ones that are here today at Nancy's Creek, and I want to welcome all those that are online watching us. God just continues to bless us and keep us going. Uh, let's start with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, today is the first Sunday, so let's have a little Bible trivia. No cheek. Welcome to Bible Trivia. This time, we'll be asking questions about the Lord's Prayer. The first question for 100 points. The prayer begins with our Father. To whom are we speaking? Is it A, our brother, B, our teacher, C, our God, or D, our parents? I would say C, about that. The answer is C. Our Father refers to God. The next question for 300 points. Our Father who art in blank. What word is missing from this line? Is it A, the garden, B, church, C, the wilderness, or D, heaven? The answer is D, our Father who art in heaven. The next question for 400 points. Hallowed be thy blank. What word is missing from this line? Is it A, name, B, fruit, C, age, or D, house? Howard be thy name. Howard. And they think that's God's name, Howard. The answer is A. Hallowed be thy, Hallowed be thy name. Yeah. The next question for 4,000 points. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, what does it mean? Is it A, we should boss our friends around? B, we should be mean to others? C, we should be good every day like God wants us to be. Or D, we should lie to our parents. <laughs> the answer is C. When we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that means we should be good every day like God wants us to be. The next question for 10,000 points. What are we asking for when we say, give us this day our daily bread? Is it A, the basic things we need to live? B, breakfast food? C, toys? Or D, friends? The answer is A. When we say, give us this day our daily bread, we're asking for basic things we need to live. The next question for one million points. Blank those who trespass against us. What word is missing from this line? Is it A, punish, B, ignore, C, forgive, or D, forget? The 
the answer is C, forgive those who trespass against us. The next question for a few points. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Which of the following choices is a bad thing we could do if we were tempted? A, cheat on a test at school. B, be mean to our classmates. C, steal a candy bar. Or D, all of these. I say D, all of them. The answer is D. All of these choices are bad things we could do if we were tempted. The next question for four points. Most of the time, at the end of the prayer, we say one word. What is that word? Is it A, thanks, B, bye, C, amen, or D, hallelujah? The answer is C. At the end of the prayer, we often say one word, amen. The next question for infinity points. Jesus taught this prayer to the disciples, who later became known as apostles. What is the known number of disciples? Is it A, 1, B, 14, C, 20, or D, 12? The answer is D. The number of known disciples is 12. And the last question for a bunch of points. The Christian Bible is divided into two parts. What are they called? Here's a hint, old and new. Is it A, deeds, B, commandments, C, doctrines, or D, testaments? The answer is D. The Christian Bible is divided into two testaments. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon. a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Hallelujah, the word of God for the people of God. Go and do likewise. The one that showed mercy. Amen. The one that showed mercy. Who's your neighbor? The ones that show mercy. Karen. 
mercy. He stood up and he said to Jesus, What do I need to do or what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now this is an innocent question. It is a question that any sinner would ask. It is a question that Jesus came to answer. But it is a trick question. It's a trap. What the lawyer doesn't know is that he's talking to a lawyer. Now, only not only is he talking to a lawyer, but he's talking to the law writer. He was talking to the law giver. He was talking to Jesus Christ, who knew the law, who was responsible for the law. And the summarization is provided in the text that all of the law is concluded in two verses. Number one, that you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, and with all thy soul. Two commandments. We have ten commandments that's been given that God gave in the beginning, but Jesus narrowed them down to two commandments. And really, if you look at those two commandments, you can find the part of each one of the Ten Commandments is well stated within those two commandments. If you forget all the other commandments, if you forget all the other things that you have read in the book of Exodus, regarding the laws of God and what to wear and what fabric it's to be made of and what you ought to do this day and what you ought to do that day. It all boils down to two mm -hmm. commandments. Amen. That you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. If you do that, you've got at least 50% of it made, glory be to God. Amen. At least 50% of the law. The other 50% is how you treat me. It's how you treat other people. If you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, then number two is love your neighbor as yourself. Just love them as good as you love yourself. I don't know, there's probably a lot of people out there that don't love their self. Amen. But we, we must learn to be merciful. If you're merciful, merciful, be merciful with me. If you measure up you can still be a Christian. You can honor God, honor one another. I just want to present to the court for your consideration that the same grace that looks beyond your weaknesses and saw your need be extended to me also. I thought I was supposed to be a, a deacon I thought I was supposed to be a woman of God. But I'm guilty. I'm wrong. I'm guilty. But I throw myself on the mercy of the court. And God has grace sufficient to forgive me. He that is without fault. If you never messed up, then kill me. But if there was grace given to you. For anything that you've done in your life, any mistake that you've made, give that same amount of grace to me. Amen. Don't throw it all out. Find enough grace to find in your heart that if you can consider that 
It is possible that you can be moody, that you can be nasty or rude or gossip or lie. <laughs> still jerk and still have the Holy Spirit <laughs> allow grace to come unto me also. Then maybe it could be possible for that same grace that looked over your faults. Let a brother have a little grace also. Amen. Let me have a little grace toward me. The debate becomes not only what is written in the law, but what is intended by the law. This is why we have the Supreme Court. They're not there to write the law, but they're there to interpret what the law is intended to be. We have to love one another. The whole spirit of the law it's tied up in these two principles that we love God with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, yeah. and our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. The only warning I want to give you is about that you try to judge people. But the Bible says what measure you judge other people that you shall be judged. Amen. It is impossible for you to hate you and love me. You don't have the capacity to fail in love and yet love me. You have to love yourself. You can only treat me as good as you treat yourself. That was worth the whole trip coming to church this morning. Yeah. You can only treat me as good as you treat yourself. Amen. If you don't love yourself, how in the world can you Nobody love is. me? I'm not a smart man, <laughs> but I know what love is. Yeah, well, who's your neighbor? This is huge. Who is your neighbor? Who should I care about? How broad are my parameters of the responsibility of the love that I have to share with other people? Who is my neighbor? Have I set a block to where I'll only go to this portion or this place to Love my neighbor. Is my neighbor my community? My zip code? My race? My gender? The people who vote like I do? The people who agree with me? The people who do what I do? We're hung up on these questions of who is our neighbor? And it is a huge question. Do I only perceive white folks as my neighbor, or black folks, or Indians, or am I an advocate for women? Am I a Democrat? Or am I a Republican? And does that determine who my neighbor is? It's just straight people, my neighbor. Get kind of quiet in here. <laughs> this is a much bigger question than we give it credit for. Who you determine your neighbors are is who you determine how you will love and who you will love. Because what the lawyer wanted was permission to stop his love within his comfort zone. We want to love conveniently. Let me say that again. We want to love conveniently. Everybody has grace for what they do. 
Everybody has compassion for the people who think like them. I love people like me. I understand them right away. They do what I would do. They respond the way that I would respond. They get me. They get mad when I get mad. They're compassionate when I'm compassionate. I get them. But what about those people who get mad over the things that I wouldn't get mad about, that I think are petty? Who is my neighbor? We have built fences. In some cases, we have built fences with no gates. So we won't allow people to come in at all. But I want you to go deep down in your heart and consider where your fences are located. Who is your neighbor? <clears throat> because those fences define who your neighbors are and define your neighborhood. Go into your phone and run down the directory and you can find where your fences are. Y'all didn't mind me talking about the lawyer, but now when we're talking about each other, it's getting quieter and quieter <laughs> in here. We run all over the church and shout, but I love it when things get quiet because that means you're thinking. What happens when somebody Love breaks another one's rules and breaks their heart. And you have to wrestle with what you're willing to throw over the fence. Or do I widen my parameters to allow them to come in? This is the discussion that is being tried before us today. This is the litigation of how you define your faith. How far do you go? How far are you willing to extend your parameters, your boundaries? How far are you willing to extend the fence and allow other people to come in? Looking for help. The priest is in a place where help should be expected. Be kind to me. You're a Jew just like me. You're my neighbor, dude. Mm -hmm. You should be trying to help me, but I have been beaten and thrown into a ditch and I need help, I'm hurt and I'm half dead and I need someone to help me and here comes a man of the cloth and instead of him helping me, he goes on the other side of the road. They passed by on the other side. And then the lawyer came by, the Levite. Mm -hmm. He came dancing around and jumping around. And all of a sudden, he sees me laying there. And he crosses on the other side of the, the road. The Levite should be willing to help me also. But he didn't. Scripture throwing the Levite coming over there, looked at him, and passed by on the other side. You have survived. Growing pain of deliverance that you're having to wrestle with and disappointment is being born. Your expectations are being dashed because the people that you depend on that are like you, that you've always looked up to, are passing you by. You cannot have this disappointment without expectations. We expect people to do certain things, and when they don't, we're disappointed in them. I control my disappointment by managing my expectations. You know, if you get so high 
that when you go down low, that there's no middle ground. We need to have a balance in our life where when we're happy and everything, we're, we're not so high that we can't come down and enjoy life. And when we're hit with a problem, we shouldn't go so low that we can't come up to that middle ground. Disappointment is exhausting because too many disappointments make you bitter. It makes you cynical. And it makes you say, I don't care. Ain't nobody going to do nothing for me anyway. I've heard people talk like this. I'm talking to you. He's talking to me. He said to me just now, what do you think I mean when I said to Mary and Martha, show me where you laid him down. Take me to the spot where you gave up. Bring me, bring your anointing to the place where you stop expecting because I'm going to meet you right in the place where you caved, where you gave in. Amen. They should have kept going and never gave up. The Lord said right at the place that you decided to settle, that may, maybe it's not me, maybe it's not going to get any better. You ever been in a problem where you thought that things were so bad that they would never get any better? Mm -hmm. That you wouldn't be able to survive it? Yep. Maybe it's not meant to make it past this moment. We're ready to give up. God said, I want you to meet me right in that spot right now. Whoever you are, God said, show me. Take me right to the spot where you gave up and believe again. Amen. Trust again. Amen. Have faith again. Amen. Trust in God. Amen. God is the one that gives the answer. God is the one that gives the anointing. God is the one that gives the grace. God is the one that loves you. And God is always extending his borders to include Amen. you. And the third step came, and you got to understand that it was a Samaritan. It was not a Jew. It was a Gentile. Glory be to God. Amen. And God found grace in the Gentiles Amen. because the Jews had rejected him. Ain't no way in the world that a Samaritan should be there helping this Jew. But this Samaritan was moved with compassion. And he bound his wound. He gave to him. Mm -hmm. And he carried him to a place where he could have comfort. Mm -hmm. A place where he could be taken care of. He is the expanding border of the definition of a neighbor. Jesus is saying, it's sometimes you get better help from people who are unlikely to help you than the ones that you depend on and have defined as being the people Amen. that are like you. Amen. Your deliverance is in the hand of somebody who's not like you at all. Are you willing to broaden the, the parameters, Amen. broaden the fence, and allow somebody that's not like you to come in because they're merciful? Mm -hmm. Somebody that you normally wouldn't feel comfortable with, they call them your neighbor. Amen. Go down. So that someone else can come up. And the good Samaritan climbed down off of the beast and poured oil and wine and bandaged up the wounds and put the man who was down, he brought him up. The Samaritan came down, 
so that the victim could go up. The Samaritan came down so that the victim could have mercy in a time of need. Jesus came down so that the sinner could come up. I'm telling you that trading places is a wonderful thing. Glory be to God. Somebody in here was down, but Jesus came down so that you could go up. Jesus is my attorney. Jesus is the one that fights for me. The Bible says that he ever makes intercession for me, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Jesus is the one who gave all so that I may have some. Jesus is the one. He gave it totally and completely. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Praise your glorious name. Who all? Well, 